Welcome back. We're here today to talk about our May 2024 production updates at CNC Labs. First new update, uh, we're looking to grow the team. Basically, we are expanding our product line. We have the alt mill in production. We have the laser, it's a CO2 laser project happening, and we have a couple other projects happening. To be able to support all those projects, we also need more people. So if you'd like to apply to work for us, go on our website, onto our blog, there's a link there uh, talking about that. Production for Long Mill Mark II continues to move along. We just got a big batch of the T8 and the T12 anti, uh, spring load anti-backlash nuts. We were, those sold really well. Sold out for the first 100 sets at the very beginning and then another 200 sets after that. And then we, after we sold out of those 200 sets, we had maybe about 250, 260 more back ordered. We just got 325 more sets in, so those are getting shipped out now. And we're getting another couple of thousand uh, nuts for the new batch production. So we'll be able to put them in with the default kits. Now that we have a whole ton in the wild, it seems like people are really happy with them and they've solved a lot of the problems with the tensioning. The only kind of recurring thing is that some people are over tightening the M5 nuts that hold the, the, the block to the gantry. So we just have to remind people to not over tighten them. If you over tighten them, they squish the threads and cause the thing to bind. It's, a, it's exactly the same as the, the regular T8 nuts and the T12 nuts. So that's something to be aware of. You only need to tighten them until the lock washer is flat and you don't need to tighten them too much. And yeah, that's pretty much that. Very close to finishing batch nine. Uh, as far as I'm aware, we're very close to running out of the original long board. And one of the things we wanted to do in the new batch was to switch over to SLB as a default option. Um, so the, the, the resource development team are, is updating the resources to reflect the change and get us ready for Mark, uh, Long Mill Mark II. We've increased the lead time for the Long Mills to six to eight weeks uh, because we need some time to transition over between the two versions. Lead times will be a little bit longer for Long Mill uh, for the next month or two until we kind of get all set up for this new version. But we are shipping stuff, the rest of the queue, I think we have about 90 machines left to fulfill and the production team is working as quickly as we can for that. And we're have, we will have another uh, team member start next week to, to help with the production as well. Laser beams and Vortex shipping out as usual, most ship out within a couple days. Now that we have the super long board out in the wild, we are also working on the full fourth axis functionality. So if you guys aren't aware, the Vortex, you have to switch, you basically use the power from the Y axis motors to power the the rotary axis part. What with the full independent fourth axis, you'll be able to have power to the Y axis and power separate to the rotary axis so that you can move the Y, X, Y, Z all simultaneously as, as it turns. So you get full four axis control. In practice, it might not make a big difference in the short term because the programming for full fourth axis is a much more complicated. Eventually we'll work on the details and nuances to be able to kind of take full advantage of that. I should also mention that for alt mill, for us to have Vortex supported fully, we do need to have the driver to control the, vor uh, the, the Vortex. So probably when we have the Vortex's launch, we'll also have that as part of the whole system. It has been tested with the SLB already, um, but we just haven't made a production version of the driver system yet. Alt mill, so alt mill is a big thing. Uh, we're continuing to do production for the first 50 machines. We got some of the parts in already, which include the gantries, uh, some of the SLB at EXT, the board that we're gonna use for the alt mill, power supplies, the fasteners, and um, just like a bunch of other stuff. So basically the plan is, we're right now we're setting up a space to do the assembly part, a uh, dedicated space for the alt mill. And as we get parts in, we'll be starting to assemble and test everything. There are a couple of things that I think will be bottlenecks for shipping the machine. One will be for the closed loop stepper motors. Uh, we've ordered the batch, but they're expected to take a couple of weeks to manufacture as well as the spindle and VFD components. Those are also expected to be here in a couple of weeks, which will lead us into like mid to late May. We think we will be able to get 
some machines out by the end of the month. However, if there's any delays with those last regular parts, um, or if we need more time to test and assemble everything, that will impact the delivery time. So that's just, you know, giving everyone a heads up. Realistically, probably most people, the first batch of 50 will get shipped out in June, uh, but we are working really, really hard to do it as quickly as possible and getting shipped stuff as quickly as possible. We also have started production on the next 150 to 200 alt mills. Those parts are expected to arrive in June as well. So we'll be able to prep for shipping in July. We're working on testing the prototype dust shoes for the alt mill. We also have gotten a lot of requests to have the alt mill spindle available as a kit that can be used on the long mill. So that's something that we're also working on. We probably won't have that available until we get our first batch of production spindles that we can make sure we can do the testing on a number of them first. Also another cool thing we made was the aluminum uh, guitar body. We needed a test to make sure the motors work properly and all the components of the machine work properly. So we basically threw a pretty intense project at it. As you guys know, we shipped, started shipping the super long board. So the first batch of 100, uh, sorry, 475 controllers has have been shipped and we're working on the production for the, the new batch. We have parts in production and are coming in for another 1,500 super long boards. We expect to have everything in June. So if you've ordered it and you are still waiting on to get the board, you should be waiting until about June to have those parts in. Uh, we're obviously working as quickly as possible to manufacture the next batch. And um, we've also updated the QA, uh, some tweaks to the design to improve the manufacturability. We'll be able to get them out faster than our first initial batch. And there's going to be a new update to G-Sender coming out pretty soon that will fix some of the minor bugs and things like that. I've seen a lot of people suggest to people to revert back to an older version if they have bugs with G-Sender and SLB interface. But I would actually recommend people to try to upgrade to the latest version because we're like fixing bugs and it's not like, yeah, like each version is getting much better at uh, kind of like ironing everything out. CNC router project, um, as you guys know, we're working on kind of like a spindle alternative. Johan has been working pretty hard on that. We sent one of the prototypes to China to one of the manufacturers of the motor to do some additional tuning because we're able to get the power that we want, but not the speed control that we want. And they sent us some videos on the testing. They look more promising than before, although they're still hard to validate if that is as good as we need it to be um, until we actually test it here. There is something that we kind of are at an impasse for. So the motor that we're using is an open, it's a sensorless motor, which means that there isn't a sensor built onto the motor to tell a controller what speed it's rotating at. It uses a fuel oriented, it uses something called fuel oriented control, which basically understands the electrical field of the motor to know how fast it's rotating, which does work pretty well and it can hold pretty close speed. Uh, but the reaction of the controller is slower because it doesn't get a direct signal from the motor on how fast it rotates. So there's a bit of calculation time to control the motor and that calculation time makes the motor respond more slowly as well. If this version of the motor doesn't work, then we might have to step up to a censored version of the motor. And we are working with some manufacturers uh, and designers to kind of iron that out as well. But what we found with this project is that there's no like direct path to a motor that already works off the shelf. Work is being done to um, design and develop a new system to work in this application essentially. But other things um, on the project, we've made some progress. Uh, we had the students make a dyno, which measures the torque and it is able to apply a load, a specified load to the motor so we can test how it responds at certain loads. And there's also a sensor to measure the rotational speed and kind of know what the spikes are. So we're able to see like 50 mil, like what a 50 milliseconds response is gonna look like and, and things like that. Although we don't have the motor that we need, we're able to figure out which motor works because we have the equipment to test it. Chris will be at the open source hardware uh, conference in Montreal this week. So if you are also there, say hi to him. I might be also there. I just found out about it like a couple days ago. So 
I will decide on if I will also go. I'm not posting the updates for the CO2 laser because Akena is going to be doing that. Um, there should be an update video coming out pretty soon, so keep an eye out for that. Super long board. Um, I also ordered some basically POS systems, like point of sales. It's like the ones that if you go to a bar or restaurant, they like type in your order into the computer. The idea was because they're really durable, they can act as like a touchscreen interface for the for G Sender and stuff like that. Uh, so I have a couple on the way here to test and potentially be able to adapt it as like a computer addition to SLB. Until next month, make sure to stay tuned on our blog and our YouTube channel. I also post a lot more information on the blog posts and links and videos and things like that. So if you're watching this video, make sure to also check out the blog. See you later.